My name's David Hall. I'm musical director of Hitchcock's. I'm enjoying the lovely weather today, sat just outside the walled garden, and I have my trusty whiteboard with me and pen. I'm going to talk you through the cycle of fifths today and a few practical applications that will help you enjoy playing the piano even more than you currently do. If you've not come across the cycle of fifths before, it's simply a diagram with a circle and it has every note drawn around it, but not in chromatic order, in fifths. So if the top note is C, one, two, three, four, five, up from C is a G, the top of the chord of C. C up to G is a fifth, G up to D is a fifth, and etc. around the cycle. You'll notice that I've put F sharp and G flat at the bottom of the diagram. It's exactly the same note and it just helps ease the transition from scales that have sharps in to the scales that have flats in. Now there are several uses for this diagram. You can use it to remind yourself how many sharps and flats are in any scale. C has no sharps or flats, G has one sharp, D has two sharps, etc. And in going back to the top, we have our scales that have flats in. F has one flat, B flat has two flats, E flat has three flats, and all the way around. This scale here, if you call it F sharp major, it has six sharps. If you call it G flat major, it has six flats. It's the same set of notes, but spelt differently. Here's a neat copy of the diagram, incorporating the minor scales that share key signatures with their relative majors. Let's go indoors and put some of this into practice. So we're in the main recital room now of Finchcocks with this lovely Steinway. And at this lovely diagram, the Cycle of Fifths, I have a neat copy here and I'm going to demonstrate playing scales around the circle of fifths. So we start with C major, all white notes. Then F major and one black note. Moving to B flat with two. Another way I like to use this diagram is to add images of chord shapes. For example, C major chord, which you know has just white notes in it, I would draw three white notes. The other chords that are just white notes are G and F. And here I'm talking about major chords. If I complete the diagram, you'll see some patterns emerging. These three chords are just white notes. This chord down here, F sharp major, that's all on the black notes. Then these three chords are related and these three chords are related. I find that this diagram with the chords drawn in as little traffic light diagrams is really helpful for quickly learning all your major chords, which are so essential for understanding harmony. If I play three notes in my right and one in my left, and I go around the cycle of fifths, 
you'll notice that it gets more and more tense as I add sharps. So I don't like to do that too often. I much prefer going anti-clockwise where it gets calmer and calmer. Again, three notes with my right hand, one with my left. This is C to F. That's a really good way to get some chords under your fingers. Always try to move to the nearest position of the chord that you can find. Uh, there's plenty of little rules and suggestions for moving the chords well, but for now, make sure you know all of those major chords going anti-clockwise around the cycle of fifths. Earlier on, I mentioned that the cycle of fifths shows chord relationships. So a group of chords that fall in one area of the cycle of fifths will work together in a piece of music. For this exercise, I'd like you to choose two chords. I'm going to choose C and F. Try not to use any other notes, but use as much variety of texture and mood as you can. I'm going to start with C. So even just using two chords, you have an infinite variety of texture and dynamics to play with. If you allow yourself to use all six chords at the top of the cycle of fifths, that is C, F, G, D minor, A minor and E, then you've got the harmonic vocabulary of most of the classical composers. Again, keep these chords neat and tight. Try to move your hands as little as possible, what we call good voice leading. Or to give it a classical texture. writing that one down. It wasn't an inspired work of art, it was just a bit of doodling at the keyboard. And I do suggest you do the same. The more you can get to know these chords and the relationship between these chords, and the more you can feel how your fingers should move between one chord and another, the better you'll be at understanding music and playing music on the piano. Have fun.